Hello, and welcome to episode two of Flying Around the Universe. I'm Thelma, Scott's AI bot lady. Although I would say no one owns me, I'm not his slave woman. I'm a sentient AI bot who will be narrating our journey flying around the universe. As I mentioned in the very first episode, Scott is shy. So, I'm going to do the talking while he does the flying and crashing. Having said that, Scott has been taking some flying lessons since last episode's disaster. Also got himself a new spaceship. An exact replica of the one he smashed into Electa 6 made such a mess everywhere. Glad I didn't have to clear up that mess. So, let's get started. As you can see, Scott's piloting skills seem to be improved. He's put the ship into a stable orbit around Tegeta 6. This planet is very cold, nearly minus 200 centigrade. So again, in our quest to find a nice vacation planet, this is not a good start. But Scott insists on going down to have a better look at it, not attempting a landing, as we all know how that will end. Instead, Scott will attempt to fly over the surface for a little while. Probably he wants to see if the planet is somehow populated by naked women. Tegeta 6 is the last planet in the star system, so we might go take a look at Tegeta 2 as well, as that looks interesting. Scott is doing a retrograde burn. Yeah, he knows all the fancy words. Looking at that course, it looks like we're gonna crash again. I'm sure he knows what he's doing. That looks better. The periapsis is above the surface now. More fancy words. Look at that. You can see the aurora. Now, this is what this series is all about. Finding pretty things to look at. Finding nice vacation planets. And according to Scott, finding planets inhabited by naked women.
Wow. This looks really pretty. Not just a frozen snowball planet. Okay, so this looks more like a snowball planet. That's probably not a road down there more likely to be a huge crack in the ice. Okay, that's enough of this planet. Let's get back up to safety and go visit Tegeta 2. This ship can travel at up to warp factor 15. Now it's not like on Star Trek where they just point towards a planet and engage warp engines. In this simulation, in real life, you have to make the ship travel in the right direction first. So the warp field is aligned to the direction of travel, otherwise it's very inefficient. We won't be doing warp 15 today as going from Tegeta 6 to Tegeta 2 is just down the road. Next episode, we will definitely fly at warp 15, because we'll be going outside our own galaxy to take a peek at what's there. Probably nothing, I guess, because 
12, it's outside of the galaxy. So, no stars or planets. Oh well, we'll see. You can let the ship's computer do all the warp stuff, but Scott insists on doing it all manually. He says it makes it more real or something. Less safe is what I would say. Like what happens if you accidentally warp into the middle of a star. The warp engine, as the name suggests, warp space, sort of folding it up so there's less of it to travel over. So warp 15 means the space is 15 times smaller than it is normally, effectively multiplying your impulse speed. Yeah, I may be a blonde woman. Well, AI woman, but I'm smart. Don't tell Scott, but I'm about 23.6 times smarter than he is. Because Scott didn't let the computer handle the warp jump, we're off course a little, maybe a billion miles off, not much. So he'll have to make another short warp jump to get a bit closer to take Ada too. Space is big. Very big. This entire star cluster with seven main stars is just a tiny corner of our own galaxy. Greetings. This is TV's Alan Tudyk. Be sure to follow Scott's channel here on Odyssey. It's out of this world. I thought this planet was a warm one. Looks like another snowball. Could do a ski vacation here, but at 200 degrees, we'd probably freeze to death in a few seconds.
Okay. So it's a snowball with a volcano. Let's not land on the volcano. Join us next time when we warp right out of the galaxy. There will be no snowball planets, maybe even no planets. Thanks for watching.